Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, City Council meeting of Fairhope, uh, Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023, 2 o'clock p.m. Um, but we have a first, we have a prayer by Pastor Rick Malagani. Um, we want to thank Mr. Monagali for all his services in our community, for he is leaving our community to go establish himself in another community. So if y'all don't mind, let's please first give Mr. Rick Malagani a hand and wish him the best of prayers and blessings and peace and all of those good things. All right, Mr. Rick, you have I appreciate it. that. You put me on the spot now. <laughs> That's okay, Sherry. I, I, have, I, get, I get back at people. Yes. <laughs> let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we ask for your presence here today as we just deliberate this, uh, the future of our fair city. We ask a blessing upon this leadership and all that are present here. May everything we decide today be in accordance with your will and purposes for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rick. Once Thank again. You, Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, guys. All right. Can we get someone to approve the minutes from our December 11, 2023 regular work? Uh, I make a motion. We approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Report from the mayor, please. Mayor. Good afternoon. Everybody hear me? Is this mic on? I guess yes. it is. Okay. Um, so I really do not have a report other than to say Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has a blessed holiday. And I'm going to yield my time to Lily Norris. Lily is with um, Fairhope High School, and she is here to talk to um, myself and the council about ecotourism in Fairhope. Lily? Welcome, Ms. Lily. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. So as she said, my name is Lily Norris. I'm a senior at Fairhope High School, and I'm currently investigating the negative impacts tourism has on our environment and ways we as a community can help change that. This started as a classroom project, but quickly developed into the idea to bring more awareness and change within the city of Fairhope. In the packets I provided to you, I have slightly more detailed plan as well as cost and further communi communication opportunities with me, of course, if you decide to help sustain this endeavor. Um, since Fairhope is known as a more tourist city, I'm wanting to provide an eco-friendly addition to Fairhope's kind of repertoire of achievements. As some of you may know, tourism is a $2 trillion industry in the U.S. and a $7.4 billion industry in Alabama, with 80% of all major tourist ci cities being coastal towns and cities much like ours. I'm asking for your approval and help to start a sort of go green project right in downtown Fairhope. I have already started work with my school through um, peer polls to assess the up and coming generation's interest in bringing more eco friendly additions to our city. Ms. Jennifer Janes, my marine science teacher, and Mr. John Cardwell, my principal, have helped me already in pursuing this aspect of my education because it not only showcases my generation's desire to bring change, but also highlights the best parts of Fairhope community, nature's beauty, and artistry. Depending on the level of interest, I'd like to incorporate rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting would be most beneficial <coughs> to our ecosystems and our sewage systems as it directs rainflow into usable water for either public fountains, plumbing, and for emergency uses during power outages, which we experience quite a lot, especially during hurricane season. From my research, this would be a welcome contribution to the downtown area. These additions could be implemented not only for sustainability, but also marketability for tourist-influenced growth, and I'm proposing a project that could be used to gain awareness and support towards ecotourism within communities like ours. <coughs> All right. Thank you so much. Listen, I'll tell you what, you got my attention and they know it <laughs> because uh, as, they, as my, my laterals know that I am all about this. This helps solve, this moves us forward as far as evolving as a community, as far as our scientists are concerned yes, sir. and our environment is concerned. So thank you. I Good appreciate job. it. Good job. Yes. Council, what y'all think about that? Um, you know, if you're looking for a spot to do something, if you're just trying to go off of volume, the, uh, the amount of water that, that comes off of the parking deck mm -hmm. during the heavy rain is pretty incredible. Yep, there's the parking deck because um, coastal, our coastal area receives six to ten more inches of rain than all other cities in 
Alabama, and so we have a significantly higher inches of rain per year. And so something like this would be able to go back into the community because with water harvesting like this, you can either repurpose it into drinking water or you can repurpose it into watering our beautiful flowers or our plants around downtown. Yeah. And so it's a good way to preserve money and our environment. So there's some legislation. I had a gentleman contact me when I was first pushing out that we need to be a little bit more innovative in our thinking as far as our dehydration, as far as the yes, summers sir. are concerned. Yes, sir. Um, and I had a gentleman contact me from Virginia, <laughs> North Beach, Virginia. I don't know how he found out, but he saw it. He came across it because he follows this type of content. And he's doing this in his business. Really? As a business where he, he retrieves rainwater, he filtrates it, mm -hmm. and pushes it back through his entire business. And he saves the city, the sewage, mm -hmm. all the things that you have in this uh, portfolio here. So this is, um, I'll have to get you in contact with that guy because he's already doing it. He's also written legislation in Virginia because I think Alabama's a little bit behind on actually drinking <laughs> this water. So we would have to... I don't know. We would have to look into all of that yes, as far as legislation, ADECA, and all those people mm -hmm. are concerned. So, um, but this is great. This is forward thinking, and I love it, young lady. Thank Good you. Job. I appreciate Thank it. You. Bermuda has no potable water. Who? Zero. Bermuda. Bermuda. Everything they collect and everything you use on the island of Bermuda is used off of rainwater collection. Everything. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? It makes sense. This started as just a project within my marine science class, and we've been tasked with creating a change either in our community or within the school, and I thought it would be best to come to the community since I've seen so much positive reaction towards wanting to host public events and stuff like this before, and so I figured y'all would be the best place to come to. I think you came to the right place. Thank <laughs> you, young lady. Very Thank bright you. future. Thank you. Councilman Martin, too. Yes. And Lily, if you could leave me your number. Um, we yes. have talked about at the State of the City giving away rain barrels, maybe doing a, a drawing for a couple rain barrels on behalf of the utilities because we had to put the water conservation um, ordinance in place. In the okay, good. Perfect. Okay. So um, maybe I can contact you and you can help us give out some information on rain barrels and stuff at yes, the State of the I'd City. Okay. Thank good. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I like being the first city in Alabama this progressive as far as using the nature and the things that God gave us. I really do. I like to be the first in everything I do, but that's another story. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Public participation, guys. We got agenda items um, 5 through 14, looks like. 5 through 14. Anything on items 5 through 14, please come to the podium. Tell your name, your address. Don't be shy. Nobody? All right. Very good. Council comments. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Burrell. Council President Martin, I'd like for you to join me down uh, at the podium, and I want to invite a representative from the fire department down for a little presentation real quick. Sure. All right. Oh, this may be fun. <laughs> I only messed up one beer. Can you believe that? <laughs> so last uh, <coughs> Wednesday night, uh, the council participated in something that they've been participating in for the last 10 or 12 years, and that, that's Cheers for Charity, uh, sponsored by Barrel Brewing Company. And they have, and I know I say this very, very uh, tongue-in-cheek, I guess, celebrity bartenders to, to raise money and tips. So if you consider the council celebrities, so that's a stretch. Uh, we uh, bartended, uh, and all the tip money that we made uh, was designated to go to the Fairhope Volunteer Fire Department. So uh, on behalf of the mayor who was there supporting and feeding us and, and, and giving us tips and all the council members, everybody participated uh, and the Fairhope Volunteer Fire Department uh, and the, the community that showed up to support them. Uh, I have a check to, prevent, to present from Fairhope Brewing Company and they said they want to do more with you by the way. They, they, I sat with them today and talked to them a lot about what you do how many people you have, the area that you cover, and the training that you, you get, and just lots of things, and they indicate to me that they want to do more. But uh, today we give you a check for $1,680. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman. Yes. 
And Merry Christmas, Christmas everyone. Day. All right. Anything else, Councilman Burrell? No, sir. All right. Councilman Conyers. Uh, I just say uh, Merry Merry Christmas and, and thank you to all our city workers who who worked so hard this year and uh, just appreciate everything you guys do. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Councilman Robertson? Uh, no comment. All right. Councilman Boone. Actually, I have one. I'd like to give a shout out to the first responders of this town. I had a dear friend of mine pass away last Thursday due to a heart attack in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the call was made, the police department, fire department, and all EMT showed up at a very quick response and did everything they could to save the gentleman and uh, showed the family nothing but kindness and respect. And I'd like to thank them from the, from the bottom of my heart on a job well done. Thank you very much. All right, very good. And the family would also throw in their thanks to the tool. That's it. Okay. All right. So I would just like to say Merry Christmas to all. First of all, I would like to send my prayers and concerns to all people that is losing somebody at this time of the season. It, it never fails, and it, it seems the most opportune time to lose a family member or a friend. So I would ask everybody to keep those people in mind as you hug and love on your family members during these precious times. You know, don't take it for granted because tomorrow is not promised. So um, thank you guys, all my workers, all the people in the city that do all the jobs. I mean, people don't understand the work that you guys put in. So Merry Christmas to you guys. I love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. That's all I got. All right. Agenda item number five, final adoption. Ordinance annexation Nicole Scopolites administrates for the estate of James M. Scopolites, 4.66 acres, more or less property located on 8611 Gafer Avenue Extension, Fairhope, Alabama, tax parcel 4602-09-000016. All right. This is a uh, final adoption, guys. We talked about this a little bit in the past. I think there was no concerns. Hunter, was there any concerns on this? Is there anything else to talk about as far as where it's going, the zoning, anything like that? All is well? I just say it is coming in as R1, yep, the, the highest zoning, I would right. say. Well, for residential use anyway. Yeah, when I read the packet, it said it's coming in as R1. So. I'll make a motion for final adoption. All right. Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the annexation of this particular property? <coughs> all right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Oh, 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 it's fine. Just sorry about that. Yes, place ma one. Aye. Council President? Aye. Place three? Aye. Place four? Aye. Place five? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Lisa. Mm -hmm. Keep me in line. Keep me in line. All right, agenda item number six, the resolution. The Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute an agreement between the City of Fairhope and the Local Government Services, LLC, LGS, to provide for video fee payment compliance review services. The services options chosen under this agreement should not exceed 6,000 plus pre-approved out-of-pocket expenses if applicable. Um, this is a Greg thing, right? Um, this is a great thing. This is just to protect us to make sure that we have or are not losing funds with particular um, uh, providers such as AT&T and DirecT or all the, all the providers. Right. So um, I don't see anything with this. Anything you, you want to talk about this, Mayor, that we need to talk about at all? So. Okay. Just, very good. Yeah. We have a consultant that goes out that, that, that reviews all these particular items that come across our desk, and um, we've used him for a while. We trust him. He does a great job. Um, so, guys, if I can get a... I make a motion. Will you approve the resolution? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir, Council President. Just a, a good time to bring up, and this, this is kind of speaking to uh, the staff. And, and uh, If you get contacted by anybody 
trying to renegotiate a cell tower lease, please notify the mayor immediately or, or Kim. Uh, these people will try to trick anybody they can in the city to uh, renegotiating these leases, typically in less favorable terms than, than we have. Uh, they've just been added again uh, recently, uh, within the last few weeks. I don't know if any of you will get a phone call, but since we got so many directors in here, I thought it'd be a good time to just remind you that just please let the mayor know or Kim if somebody approaches you with trying to renegotiate. And they'll, they'll give you a sad story that, you know, in order to keep service in the city, we're going to have to renegotiate the terms and not trust me that it, it, it's not it's not true so uh anyway just since we were on the subject i thought it'd be a good time to remind everyone of that yes yes that's a great point uh great point any further discussion on that all right hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay motion carries all right agenda item number seven the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of the annual renewal of Palo Alto support subscriptions for the firewall that is on NASPO contract with Clear Winds Technologies and therefore does not have to be let out to bid. The total amount not to exceed $52,230.24. I think, Jeff, this is you. You yep. want to come kind of give us a little bit about this, please? It's, yep. it's a budgeted item. Too. It's, yeah, it's a big budgeted item. Thank you. Well, we didn't have a work session today, so I'm going to kind of let people. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, budget item, yearly renewal. Uh, budgeted 55 came in um, under budget, but don't get too excited. We got a next agenda item. Yeah, no, I saw it. <laughs> but it's just, it's just to get the subscriptions and support for the firewall. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So um, this is an annual thing? We do this every year? Every what, year, yes, sir. Or what is it? It's uh, every year. It's a yearly renewal. And we pay the 52 every year? Every year. Wow. I'm in the wrong business, guy. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. Very good. Thanks, Jeff. All right, guys. I'll make a motion. We approve uh, the resolution. Second. You have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All right. Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Agenda item number eight. Resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement and the annual renewal of Palo Alto Cortex XDR Pro upgrade for one endpoint that is on the NASPO contract with Clearwater Technologies and therefore does not have to be let out to bid the total amount not to exceed ten thousand one hundred twenty five dollars and zero cents. This issue as well, Jeff. Right. So <clears throat> yearly renewal again. This is the uh, think of this as the your antivirus for your desktop laptop computers endpoint protection. Uh, budgeted 8500 so this is over budget um, the total price was 10125 they went up in price but we're gonna let the uh, agenda item 7 the difference from that cover cover the cost difference on this one and it should should equal out yeah because agenda item 7 was only 50 was it 50 or 55 was 50, budgeted right. it's using around a little over 52 mm -hmm. And then I've been 52. Very good. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I make All a right. motion. We approve. A second member of this. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. All right. Agenda item number nine: resolution that the city council approves and adopts the recommendation for the planning department restructuring and reclassification as followed. Upon the retirement of one code enforcement officer on December the 31st, 2023, reclassify one code enforcement officer grade seven to planning technician grade eight, effective January 1st, 2024. I think we're losing somebody, Hunter. I think that's what that is. We are, and it's, it's a yeah. position on here, but kind of diminishes 26 years of service. So do want to publicly thank Kim Burmeister for for the time she's put in with the city. She will be sorely missed in her, her knowledge and effort uh, in kind of protecting not just some of the code enforcement signs and, and uh, junk vehicles, things like that, but certainly our natural environment. She's done a phenomenal job for many years and kept a lot of us in line and the city out of trouble. Um, 
and on a lot of uh, successful lists around the, the southeast. So um, we hate losing her. Um, this is a little bit of a misnomer that we're losing a code enforcement officer. Yeah. Um, so, so some things have been outside of the planning department been supplemented. We actually have a couple of right of way inspectors that are laying eyes on job sites. One of the big jobs they do is just monitor job sites, things like that. So there, there are more people in the field uh, in net monitoring our code enforcement for violations will be following up on that paperwork we also one of the roles that code enforcement did was monitoring business license things like that there's a, a new position that will help supplement that so one of the things we are seeing a little pressure on is reviewing building permits uh, in the planning department and that's what the planning tech does so we, we kind of need some help on that side and we're also moving the sign uh, reviews into the planning tech positions so kind of offload some of that. So that's the game plan. Um, this is not, there's a, not a financial difference. You see the two grades, but in the reclassification, because Kim had been here so long, she was higher than the, the highest level of, gra of grade seven. Sure. So from a financial standpoint, there's no, no difference. Probably save a little money for a few years if we hire yeah. um, well, more yeah. entry level or mid-career mid person. This is giving us some time to, to work from the inside to give people opportunity inside to move up. Yes, that's a good deal. All right, very good. All right, thank you, Hunter. Yes, sir. All right. Um, any questions for Hunter, guys? No, just thanks for that explanation. Then. Yeah, all right, very good. All right. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second, guys. <laughs> any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh -huh. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, guys. All right. Agenda item number 10, a resolution to award bid number 24010 to Osprey Initiative for Go Mesa Litter Traps project with a bid proposal not to exceed $166,722.56. All right. Um, these are our, our traps for our uh, gutters, right? I mean, for the litter, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, they, they capture trash and, and, and to protect the environment. Right, they usually skip down the drains. This is um, part of what the young lady was referring to. This is some it of is, that. The ecosystem. the ecosystem, yeah, this is some of that. And we're doing it, I just want to see us move more towards this, you know. Um, the kids are learning about it. I know we're old and behind, but we got to catch up to them. The times is moving. You know, we got to protect this, this God-given earth that we have. So these are things that we're doing here in Fairhope that we like to see. Um, um, is there anybody, anything special about this that we need to know about? This is passed through. This was budgeted as well, correct? It's a fully okay. paid for by the grant. Yeah. It's by the grant. Very good. This so, is grant money. Yeah. So just a question, since we didn't have the pleasure of hearing about it in the work session, Don usually yeah. is here and talks a little bit about it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I was just Anybody? curious where uh, where this one would be going, what's yep. the scope of it and everything. So, Don sends us. Tell, tell us your name, please, love. And your Cassie address. Eldridge, and I'm one of the project managers for Osprey Initiative. Oh, thank you. He sends tell his me. regards. He wishes yes. he could be here. Uh, so, this is a fully funded project through the Gomesa funds with ADEM. It's actually for 12 additional okay. litter 12 devices them. within the city. And it's going to be the storm drains running into uh, Cowpen Creek, Big Cowpen Mouth Creek. Yeah, Cowpen Creek, Big Mouth Gully, and we also got a couple down by the. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name of the it. Boys Club, right? That area. Uh, yeah, the Boys Club and all that, and down yeah. by the uh, Fairhope Pier and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a 12 okay. additional litter collection devices. And the maintenance for three for three years, yeah. For three okay. years. So I remember now when we submitted for this. So we now we've been awarded. Got it. Yep. Thank y'all. I just yeah. When we talked about the the style of, <coughs> of, of the litter getter, and it's not the same as the one that's different over than near the, the Win Dixie yep. Shopping Center. So we had one that was in the Win Dixie Shopping Center. That's exactly mm -hmm. right, Council Burrell. That we we did an experiment with. And they were so fairly to tell us the truth that it wasn't enough trash going in there. So now we may look for another spot to put that particular 
type of litter getter, but that spot did not earn its award <laughs> because it, it was not enough trash, which is a good thing for Fairhope, right. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But these are just strictly for the storm drains and to kind of help us with our things going out into the bay and runoff and things back to our wastewater treatment plant. So that's always good. Um, okay, guys, I need a motion and a second. Make a motion. We approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. It's all good stuff, man. All right. Number 11, a resolution to award bid number 24011-2024 to Southern Steel Structures for Metal Building 50 by 100 by 18 truck shed for the City of Fairhope Public Works with a bid proposal not to exceed $131.46, $467.00. All right, guys. We, uh, I don't know if we heard about this one. Uh, is this um, a budgeted item or no? It's a budgeted item. Yeah, all right. 21, 28. Who's, uh, yeah, Richard. It, it, is, it, it is budgeted, and I, and I will, if you'll recall, it's, it was proposing the budget for the last three years. It finally made the cut this time, uh, and I, I will tell you, it, originally it was budgeted 75 from sanitation, 75 from public works. Kim says we can't do that, so we had to put it in one place, and that 150 turned to 125. So we came in at, uh, at uh, 6,000 and some change over. George has reported that uh, they are under 38,000 on a capital equipment purchase that's already been made. So they're gonna request Kim transfers that 6,000 from that surplus so that this balances out and moves forward. Uh, just so you know, this company did win last year. The electric truck shed did a very good job for us. And uh, uh, so we know that they're a very reputable firm and, and this has been something I know George and his team have looked forward to it for a long time to, to put these hundreds of thousand dollars pieces of equipment uh, under under protection as opposed to leaving them out. And I'll be glad to answer any more questions on that if there are. Yeah, this came high. This, for some reason, uh, these buildings, what's, what's the average on these buildings? And what, why, we went to the high side of that. Because well, you the, can, the, cause the they're doing every, it's not just a frame, right? Well, it's a, it's a truck shed, so it, it, it's partially walled, meaning the upper halves are walled, the lower half is open air, okay? Uh, but it's a, a truck within. The, 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 the one for last year for the electric, which is pretty much identical, okay, it had a little bit more wall coming down on it, was hundred, nearly 155,000 total. So, um, so it's not out of the line, so. And that was bid over a year ago, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this going on a ground or a concrete? This, yeah, this will be just gravel underneath. It'll be a concrete pier foundation. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just did a little research in that. It was like the prices were 16 to $27, and, and we were right there at 27 like the highest of the, what the market says that to build one of these things. But anyway, all right. Um, well, I had another question for yes, Richard sir. as well. Uh, we only got one bid for this as well. How many, how many yeah. people did this go yeah. out to? Uh, you know? Roughly. Find the right yeah. note. Uh, 423 vendors and viewed by 157. And you know, and as you recall, Kimco used to win every metal building bid that we ever put out. Uh, if you go through this city, every metal building we own says Kimco on it. They, after their change of ownership, haven't bid on a thing in the last four metal buildings we've gone out. Do we need so to pick we have the right so email on. address? We, 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 Councilman Burrell, go we ahead, because I got about this the I other did. Day, I brought this up. The last meeting <laughs> about how it's going out to 400 and something people, but it's just a blanket, you know, it's just broadcast, and it might be going to a car dealer and a tractor dealer and somebody that hauls sand and gravel, and they don't build metal buildings. So to say it's going out to 400 people, a little bit misleading, but, but we know that it's going out to just everybody that's on our bid list, and so people... They get so used to getting these notifications. When they get something from the city of Fairhope, they're probably like, we don't build tracks, so we're not going to open it. Uh, it just, we've got to target these people that do this job to get good bids. Yeah. I don't think we're shaking the trees enough. I, I don't think we're doing a good job of shaking the trees, and we're costing the citizens a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I won't argue that point, but, under, but understand, here's the challenge. My job was, George says, we, want, we need this thing. I design a building and a set of specifications, and I hand it off to go out for legal public bid. We have two people in purchasing 
that gotcha. are processing bids after bids after bids, they're not marketers. That, that's not well, let's hire somebody so, to do that job because so, we will pay for them like in two bids. Okay. Yeah. My opinion. So, so we, we, yeah. we need to build, and, we need, if we need to hire one or two people, I, I think that we're without competition. We're hundreds of thousands, maybe millions in some cases. Well, and in, in this case, just so you know, I spoke with the salesman at Kimco to have him review my specs before they went out. I said, "Hey, this keep an eye out for this." I know the owner of Valor Buildings and sent it directly to them and said, hey, keep this in mind. And neither of those two build, metal building companies that are here in our local region responded. I don't know what more yeah. I can do. Yeah, yeah, it, no, Richard, not, this no, may no, be the lowest about, price we would ever got. It's just a time to bring it up just because yeah. we got one bid. I'm not necessarily picking on this particular price because I don't, I, don't, I don't know what a competitive bid is on this because we only got one. Yes, yeah, so Richard, this is, we're not. Oh, Richard, well, so we got I, one that came in late. So, Richard, if I can. Okay. So, 115,000? 215. Well, of course, because anyway, so, so what, what, it's not you, Richard. I think we got, and I've said this on many meetings that there's something, and I said it years ago when I first got into office, I noticed that we do <laughs> have a bidding problem. And I asked, can we, expand our bidding to where we can start pushing our numbers down because that's the you know the whole point of the bidding is to try to get us the best deal right like everybody I'm, wins I'm, I'm not arguing that point yeah, yeah no hold on let me finish i'm not fussing at you i'm just but saying i'm getting tired of hearing the story because i'm trying to tell you that 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 i, I don't have a control over it's not the about you I'm just, we're just we're not talking to you well, right now we're talking it, to the public okay. so what, what we what we have to do is get this particular information out to more competitors in this field. And I don't think that our purchasing council, not to you, Richard, council is getting the information out to people in the direct field so that we can get the bids to lower our prices. Now, I'm not fussing at anybody. This is what it's all about. This is why we're here to discuss these things as they come up. All right. That's why we're here in these seats. So I, I think we can do a better job with our bidding process in all areas, not just with Richard, but in all areas to force our prices a little bit lower. Right now, I think we've set a precedent that, hey, we can put one bid out there and don't think people don't talk and I'll get that bid for the highest market price. You know, and I think we have to be careful with that. We have to recognize that and we have to start doing a better job at, as a total as far as getting our bids to the right people so that we can start pushing the prices down. That's just my opinion. And that's not to you, Richard. I'm not, yeah. this is just something to make the whole, you know, that money could go to kids, to playground, like it, every little penny counts in my opinion as a steward, okay? So that's just what I have, that's my opinion. Anybody else has an opinion well, on that council? Sounds like we could benefit from some additional discussion and potentially if you could hire somebody that could help the yes. process, but they could pay for themselves in just a couple of deals. Like, times so, over. That's like exactly Councilman right. Burrell said, then we ought to consider that. That's exactly correct. I mean, yes. Council Mayor? President, if I could just add, we have been discussing how we can make that process better since the last converse, this conversation was had the last time, which was probably less than a month ago. Yeah. Um, working with purchasing to see what we can do um, as far as like categorizing um, right. items that we're bidding. Yes. So we are working on that process. Because they could dial down a That's distribution correct. list to correct. say, Hey, to instead say, of 423, right. we're sending we're sending 10 to 15 people. 10, 15 right. people. Exactly. Let's get this. And this is who we've contacted. Right. Right. We have been working on it the past 30 time. days, but we we need time to work through that process. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I may need some help. It may be Councilman, temporary help. Hold on one second. Yeah. You finished, Council Conner? I was just saying it might even just be a temporary help somebody to get that process cleaned up and reorganized, and then okay. right. And then it's right. Right. Are you yielding, Council Conner? Yes. All right, Councilman no. Robinson, go ahead. Thank you. I retain the right to revoke the. You forget what you're going to say. No, you know. Let him talk. He walked out of it. And the way you forgot what you're going to say. So, so Richard, I know we went through this probably five years ago with issues with people not bidding on certain things in Fair Hope, and I think the issue that we heard at the time was that our purchasing process was. Uh, overly burdensome for certain people to want to get involved in this in the municipal bid process with the city <coughs> having reached out to two people that do this exact type of work and getting no reaction from them do you have any indication from them that that is the reason they're not bidding with us or are there other factors that are playing a role in that you know and, and I think there, there's a lot of factors one 
uh, in the world of metal buildings, this is a small job. Okay, and the fact that they have to go through all the compliance of a state bid, meaning that there's going to be a bid bond, there's a performance bond, everything else. They just say, well, we, we don't make enough money on a, on a, a 100 uh, by 50 truck shed to justify all that extra work. So they pass because there's, there's a private sector that's, you know, a lot, lot faster process, a lot cleaner process and everything else. That is just, that's my assumption. This is a small job. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's $126,000, which is a lot of money, but in the world of, of the metal building world, if there's somebody who's, you know, building a, a you know, a, 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 a five 10, or 6,000 square, square, square foot building, square foot there, foot. There's, there's more money in it for them. So I think in this micro case, that's it. Uh, the, you know, and I don't know how you fix the other end of the problem because when a vendor registers with the city, they check a series of radio buttons of what they want to be sent. So if they say, send me anything that's a vertical construction, well, yeah, you know, even the guy who, who just does wood frame construction is going to get the notice that there's a metal building being requested. Yeah. So I don't know how we, you know, if, if the vendor themselves selects what they want to be advertised, then... Then we deselect it yeah. because we find that that's not prudent to that situation. So just because they select it does not mean that we have to over you know indulge in our process you know we can kind of be strategic and more focal in that area that's just my opinion i think that's the solution you know and i i mean it has to be done because right now i think we're watered down because when i when i went in and did the due diligence you know it sent out to 400 and it says so many responds but if you look at the pattern it says it on everyone, the same thing, everyone, the same thing. And then we still have one bid. So now I'm saying, okay, that makes sense. So we're just sending out a volume, a voluminous amount of information to people that are not really specific in that category. And I think we can kind of get more specific. I don't know what that answer is, but I, I, th I think we can do it. You know, especially if we hire somebody like these, that the council members are talking about. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I would, personally be a little concerned about unchecking a box that somebody has checked when they register with us. I think, yeah, you, could, well, I think you could create some problems for yourself. I got you. I mean, what I, I'm I saying would, is we can have two different areas of expertise then. We, we have that, but then we create another area over here. Uh, yeah, I think, and, and, and Richard, I'd, I'd like to ask you and, and, you know, kind of get your thoughts globally on this is, is that typically something that we do, what you're describing here, which is if we know some of the local people that are in this business, whoever, who, whichever department it is that's putting whatever it is out for bid, if they know that there is a couple of groups locally that, that may or could do that, are we reaching out to them typically? Is that the practice? And I'll, I can only speak for myself on, on, on certain projects when I know that, you know, there's, there's a contractor this project's made for or, or a group of, of, you know, and I do, I maintain a, a list of contractors that, that that I, through my nearly 20 years of public work, have, have, have uh, gotten to know. And yeah, I will drop a little email with the, with the project advertisement and say, hey, if you want me to drop you a uh, electronic version, that I'd like you to look at it, and at least ask them to come to the pre-bid meeting. You know, the problem is they come to a pre-bid meeting, that's, that's part of the process, but then they're gonna decide, yeah, we're gonna pass on this one, we, we, we got more fish to fry. I mean, mm -hmm. that, it happens. So uh, yeah, I try to do a little reach out. Um, and, and I hate that Kimco is taking themselves out of the game. I, I mean, we don't know what's going on. They sold and then resold back, and, and you know, they were always a great company to work with. And, and, uh, and this is a new company. We, this, is, this will only be, the, if you all award this bid, it'll be the only second building we bought from the steel building lady with Southern Steel. But, it, and we're not, where's she from? Do you remember? Yeah, Baymanette. So yeah. um, we've never done business, and then uh, Valor and Quinco don't respond e anymore either. Is she so. a WBE? Pretty sure she is. Yeah, that's good. I, I, you know, it, it's not just this. It's the it's the total it's the total area of, of our business that I'm concerned about. Not just this one bid. I'm just saying in the, in the total scheme of things, I think we can do a better job of, of attracting bids if we focus a little bit better. That's just my opinion. Well, and, and that's, and that's yeah. kind of why I'm asking the questions that I'm asking because my concern is that, is that maybe we are reaching these people and, and that for one reason or the other, they're just not wanting to bid for the city of Fairhope jobs for whatever reason that might be. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's unlikely to assume that 
we're sending bid packages out to not only 450 people through our system, but also touching base with these people that we know personally well, that's just and good. still only getting one bid. I think yeah. the more likely scenario is there's either it's too, the, the, the pay is too little, the job is too little, or the, the, the situation is too burdensome to justify taking the job. That's, well, I think that's, that's kind of what my uh, worry is. George's follow-up bid you're, was... You're right uh, on one of them. And Council President, I, I may. Yes, Jay, sir, you're right. I don't... And the problem is this. The pay is too little. You know why the pay is too little? Because especially in the construction industry, we're the fastest growing county in the state. They have more work than they can possibly do. If they bid on a public job, it becomes public record, and they don't want to reveal that they'll do it for this price because they have to do it for a lower price to mm -hmm. win the job. When they can go out to private, they don't have to publish what they're doing a job for, and they make more money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like Jimmy just pointed out, the, the, the bid that came in late was – Almost twice, or you know, eighty percent higher. Well, they throw a number out, and they're like, "Well, we're busy. Right. You know, there, if you want yeah, to do it for this, I mean, we'll be glad to do right. it." Right. So that's, that's, that's what you, you just talk to anybody doing anything now. That's, <laughs> that's what they do. I mean, and and more power to them. If I had a business that could do that too, I'd probably do the same thing. But that's what we're up against. Yeah. We're up against people with more jobs than they can possibly do. Well, right Councilman now. Robert, I, I I hear you, but I still think it's something that we can look into to say Councilman Robinson is right. You know what I mean? Like mm. to, to check, yeah, rule that. Mark it down. To mark it, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jay Nick. Right. <laughs> okay, Jay Nick. That's a preliminary. <laughs> oh, I digress. Okay, guys, can we get a motion for this thing? <laughs> That's enough. I make a motion we approve and award the bid. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. And thank you. I didn't. I, Merry Christmas to you. I didn't <laughs> yeah. mean to get chippy, but but uh, hey, man, hey I you know what we like. We like this up in here. We ain't scared. <laughs> I, I do want to backtrack to the previous council item and and, and just re reinforce. You know, Kim Burmeister was kind of the brainchild behind working with the Osprey Initiative and understand what the reason that was. Kim Burmeister, and since there's been MS4 permitting for our um, uh, our separate stormwater sewer system, she has been the person that has kept us in the clear with ADM for all those years. And this is just another check in that box. And I will be honest with George and his people spend a whole lot of time making sure we don't have a litter problem in the city of Fairhope. And this is just another one of those things that's keeping us in good standing with our, our discharge permit uh, for our stormwater. And I can't say enough how much, you know, we're going to miss Kim and whoever has to fill her shoes on that MS4 permitting is going to be a, a, a big set of shoes to fill. But just uh, I appreciate her. And this is one of those things, even though we really don't perceive having a litter problem, everything that we do to intercept that litter before it becomes a problem is a good thing and keeps us in good stead with our permit. So thank you. Yes, right. a prophylactic thank process. You. Richard, Merry what Christmas. That is. Merry Christmas, Richard. Yeah, preventative medicine. All right, very good. All right, agenda item number 12, resolution, that the Mary Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract for extension number one of bid number 03822, asphalt and concrete repair with JTB Construction LLC for two months per the terms and conditions of the original contract. Okay, Mayor. I move to authorize the extension. All right. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, all right. It's $21 per square foot of labor. It's an extension yep. while they can get new specifications. Very out. good. All right, motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <clears throat> motion carries. All right, agenda item number 13, a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of hydrofluorosilic acid from Hawkins Inc. for the water department and authorizes procurement based on the option allowed by the Code of Alabama 1975 section 4116-51B7. This cost is estimated at $50,000. Wow, straight numbers, guys. That's pretty. All right. I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. This is just a pass-through cost budgeted, right? <coughs> All right. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. 
Motion carries. Agenda item number 14, resolution, that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of hydrated lime and chlorine uh, liquefied gas from the Hawkins Inc. for the Water Department and authorized procurement based on the option allowed by the Code of Alabama 1975, Section 411651B7. The cost is an estimated $85,000 for hydrated lime and $60,000 for chlorine liquefied gas. Another pass through cost. Move to procure the, the hydrated lime and chlorine liquefied gas. Yes. All right. I have a motion. Can I get a second from second. anybody? I have a motion and a second. Um, these are just operational costs, guys. Um, let's see. Any further discussion, guys? All right. Motion a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number 15 is public participation. Three minutes maximum. Please state your name, your address on any subject. Very good. All right, number 16 here. All right, agenda item number 16 is an executive, is an executive session. Um, to discuss the legal ramifications of the legal options for the pending litigation, Contro controversies not yet being litigated, but imminently likely to be litigated or imminently likely to be litigated if the governmental body pursues a proposed course of action. Um, I need um, to go into executive session, guys. I need to. All right. You got a letter? I have a letter. You want me to read that now before we yep. vote on it? I yes. believe so. All right. All right, December 20th, City Council President Corey Martin, City Council members, as a city attorney, I, Marcus E. McDowell, I hereby request to Fairhope City Council go into executive session based on Alabama Code 3625A783 to discuss the legal ramifications of a legal option for pending litigation controversies not yet beginning litigation but imminently likely to be litigated or imminently likely to be litigated if the governmental body pursues a proposed course of action. As a city attorney, I hereby request that the City Council of the City of Fairhope rise from a regular City Council meeting on Wednesday, December 20, 2023, to go into executive session. The City Council shall be in executive session for approximately 45 minutes. At the end of the executive session, the City Council shall return to the City Council chambers to resume the regular City Council meeting. All right, guys. I make a motion to go into executive session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. We'll be back in 45 minutes, guys. I'd like to make a motion what? to adjourn. Second. Third. All in favor. A mess. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Adjourn. All right, Mr. G.